Void Mage Gamer is now partnered with Flipside Gaming. So you can use the promo code on their website, all caps, Void Mage, to get 10% off all orders, $10 or more. It's a great way that you can support both Flipside Gaming and Void Mage Gamer's channel. Hello guys, welcome back to another Commander Deck Tech video. This time, as always, we're going to be going over what my patrons voted on over on Patreon. Go check it out. It's a great way to support the channel. Every week I give them a few options just to see what they would be most interested in for a Deck Tech video. This week they chose General Tazri, one of my personal favorite commanders, especially once you enter the realm of competitive EDH. At first glance, everyone's always going to associate her with the ally tribe, any sort of tribal decks. They're usually well known by having a command that synergizes with that tribe specifically and she does she's able to tutor up any ally from your deck to your hand the problem is with the deck that i'm building that's only really necessary for our actual win con beyond that the deck doesn't really depend on the ally synergy at all it's just a five color good stuff deck and i don't want to actually just make a video about competitive edh because i know that most people are not going to feel like making a deck that's thousands of dollars which in competitive edh you're able to play play the card time twister i'm never going to get a time twister in my life unless my disposable income changes anytime in the future so for the purpose of making this video this deck that i have i'll have a link to it in the description box below it'll be around 150 dollars but most of the cards in here are going to be cheap dirt cheap the only card that isn't is Food Chain. So if you want to make a budget deck, understand that there are going to be some cards you're just going to have to bite the bullet and get. It's like a $30, $40, maybe even a $50 card, but it's really the only one that's above $10. Everything else is pretty cheap and for the most part under $5. And obviously, since we're mentioning Foo Chain, you know that there's going to be combos associated with this deck right off the bat. Foo Chain is remove a creature you control from the game to add X mana of any one color to your mana pool, where X is the removed creature's converted mana cost plus one. That is very important. If it was just the creature's converted mana cost, this card would be pretty fair. But if you've watched my Prosh videos, if you watched any sort of Foo Chain combo video before, you understand why this card is ridiculous. It's pretty busted with tokens, but it's also pretty busted with with a few creatures eternal scourge squee the immortal and mist hollow griffin these three creatures are capable of being cast from exile squee has the added benefit of being able to cast himself from the graveyard which is important if you want to upgrade the deck and include something like an entomb but for the sake of comboing with food chain these three are pretty much the same eternal scourge is going to be a little bit more flexible as far as the mana goes obviously but if you have mana dorks out there if you have any sort of creatures that you can dump into food chain the mana cost really doesn't matter these are going to allow you to generate infinite mana and unfortunately the only real drawback to food chain is that the mana you get off of it can only be used on creatures so if you have any sort of x costed spell you think you're going to dump a ton of mana into x like a torment of hailfire think again because that mana can't be used on a torment of hailfire it can however be used on general tazri general tazri is going to enter the battlefield and search up one of three allies that are going to be in the deck halamar excavator colostria healer or hagra diabolist these are really the only three creatures that you want to have in here for General Tazri just to synergize with Tazri, and that's it. Once you have these out, once you're able to play them, you have infinite mana off of Food Chain already, so you can play them and just exile and recast your General Tazri over and over again, giving you infinite ally ETBs. With any of these three, you can pretty much just win the game. Now your best bet for wanting to improve this deck is going to be leaning towards comboing with things like Ad Nauseam. This deck tends to run a pretty low CMC. Hagra Diabolus is probably the only thing in here that's going to be 5 mana. So if you are able to get something like an Ad Nauseam in here while still keeping the deck's cost pretty low, you should be good to go. Now since our deck is very dependent on those cast from exile creatures, we want a way to get them into exile that's efficient, it's quick. We do play a few cards that that are in here just for that reason alone. We play Extract so we can get something like Squee into Exile or really any of the three just for one blue mana. It's a pretty good tutor, super cheap card. Again, this isn't a type of deck where I'm expecting you to play something like an Imperial Seal. So as far as budget tutors go, it's pretty good. And even in improved versions of the deck, you're still probably gonna play them. The only thing that's really different about Foresight and Manipulate Fate is that Manipulate Fate allows you to draw a card then, Foresight during the next turn's upkeep, so Manipulate Fate is technically better. But these three cards are all pretty good because if you need to combo, if you have Food Chain in your hand, you pretty much just win the game. But if you are looking for a tutor that is pretty cheap, 
One that went down considerably is Diabolic Intent. It's now closer to being a $5 card. It's two mana and you sacrifice a creature. The thing about this deck that I forgot to mention if I haven't already, we are playing a ton of mana dorks. A lot of those elves that just tap for green mana or any mana really, as long as they're able to give us some sort of advantage, we're probably going to play them. We also play two drop mana dorks like Utopia Tree, Sylvan Caryatid. It's worth it because once you get those out there with food chain, you can just exile them for whatever mana you need cast something like squee and then go with infinite mana so having something like a diabolic intent in here is pretty good because demonic tutor is actually more expensive and it would probably break the budget if you are looking for some tutors but you don't want to break the bank just go for transmute it's probably the best way that you can get the cards you actually want from your deck without actually having to invest in more expensive tutors dim your machinations as well as the card Drift of Phantasms are both 3 mana transmute cards. You also have Perplex. All of these 3 mana cards, when you transmute them, you're going to get the one card that you need in your deck the most, which is Food Chain. Good tutors. Yeah, they're more expensive. They're not as cost efficient as something like a Vampiric Tutor or an Imperial Seal. But they're going to get you what you need. And you're pretty much going to combo the same exact way that you would in a deck that's going to cost $1,000 but run the same exact combo pieces. The rest of the deck's going to be control. It's going to be hardcore control. You're going to want super efficient counter spells and ways to stop your opponents. So you're going to play things like Dispel, Spell Pierce, things you might not play in most other decks, especially in casual EDH. But in here, your combo is very important and you want to stop your opponents from stopping you. I would say in most versions of the deck, you probably wouldn't want to view this as a five color deck, but rather a Saltide deck with some needs for red and white. Green, black, and blue are the most important colors in the deck because blue is really what you're going to use to stop your opponent's combos. It's going to stop them from stopping you. It's so important because once your opponents are able to deal with food chain, you're really kind of screwed. Black is where you're going to get your tutors. It's really where you're going to set up your combo. And green is really just going to be your setup for mana. And obviously you have food chain, but that's pretty much it the deck is entirely combo centric but it's also capable of holding out to mid to late game playing decent control and cards i did forget to mention but are still just as important plunge into darkness demonic consultation these are going to get you what you need while also potentially exiling one of your cast from exile creatures so what you get out of these could be just as good as something like a demonic tutor arguably even better in certain situations but yeah the deck's pretty weird it's not what you would expect i encourage you to check out my full deck list it's not going to be super competitive put a thousand dollars into it and you have a lot more flexibility a lot more tutors that you can throw into here a lot better ramp the deck can play a lot more smoothly but as is i think if you want a small taste of competitive edh general tazri is a pretty decent option and i did try my best to put together a deck that i didn't really feel like was going to destroy your bank account so while it does look a little weird and out of place compared to a lot of other casual edh decks keep in mind that it was intended to be a budget version of a competitive deck and yes i do know that there are some actual pretty fun ally versions of general tazri that do have some combos of their own but for the sake of going against against the grain of the usual tribal based deck what you would expect of general tazri i thought it would be more interesting to give you guys something a little bit different but as always if you enjoyed it please let me know in the comment section below again support me on patreon you'll be able to vote on those options and have a say so in what i do as far as my videos go but as always you guys have a wonderful day void here signing off see you all next video